Welcome to this web exclusive conversation with family law lawyer Jonathan Lazar. We're going to talk about collaborative law. Jonathan, Hi. thanks for being here. You're very welcome, thanks. A lot of people are hearing that collaborative law is the next big thing in family law. What is it exactly? Well, collaborative law really looks at a team approach. It's trying to take some of the emotional aspects of law, of family law and the legal aspects and separate them out a little bit. So you have lawyers involved, divorce coaches or parenting coaches, and when needed, bring in specialists, a child specialist, a financial specialist, to help the family. And it really is a goal of a team approach to help a family through really the difficult time of their lives. But isn't that what every family law lawyer should be doing anyway in every case? They are, but the collaborative law distinguishes itself in that you people enter into a contract to not go to court. No offense to sitting judges. <laughs> and they are committing themselves to being involved in a process that is settlement based and therefore there could be more open discussion. And also by recognizing and appreciating the emotional side of family law, it also helps bring that aspect to the table where people can have frank discussions about how the, how the breakup happened, but still move forward, looking forward, again, with the team helping them along the way. But family courts do have a role to play in some cases for some people. So why would anyone ever contractually bind themselves at the very beginning, as mm -hmm. soon as they've broken up, to take that off the table and never go to family court? Well, there's two parts to what you said. Their contract is to not go to court, but people can eventually, if the process, the collaborative process isn't working out, the people can ex exit themselves from that. There are some restrictions, and for example, the two lawyers who are involved can't continue to be their litigation lawyers. And there so is you some... you have to switch lawyers if you... You do have to switch so if lawyers. if your negotiations break down, you've got to get another lawyer who's going to have to get all the way, way up to speed... Correct. ...on what was going on before. Yep. Why is that? Well, you know, part of that is a disincentive to get out of the process because they know it's a consequence. And the second part to what you said is there are really aren't always every case can be in done in a collaborative sense. And some collaborative lawyers may disagree with me and some may support that. But there are always going to be situations where judges are necessary. But the collaborative process is really helping pull some families, especially high conflict families, or families that have unique issues to themselves, that they can deal with their situation privately in their own context and control their own process and not really have to leave it to someone else to make a decision for their lives. It has a good attraction to people. It isn't for everybody. I've always said that family court should be a last resort. I mean, unless you're dealing with a very high conflict situation mm -hmm. or a mental health problem or a substance abuse problem mm -hmm. or domestic violence or some type of extreme situation where you're going to need a judge to deal with it. Maybe you're dealing with uh, an ex who will not communicate with you and you've just been thrown out of the house, you're mm -hmm. going to have to go to court. But for Correct. the vast majority of, of people that break up, they're mm -hmm. not in that category. Correct. And, and, and also those are the people that you find are good candidates for collaborative law. The, it is that, yes, that vast majority of people, but not all the cases. Some people are able to work their matters out. Sometimes you call it a kitchen table agreement. The people sit at their kitchen table, they come to a resolution, they go to a lawyer and say, hey, can you put this into an agreement for us? That's not necessarily a collaborative process either. It's really people who may have otherwise been geared to a court process, but are committing themselves to avoid the court system, but still work on their own problems together. But I agree with you, there are many cases that you do need a judge to step in for the variety of the reasons you've talked about because those can be factors that are really out of control of parties or someone where there is domestic violence they may not be comfortable being in the same room in the same environment as the other person. You know I, I understand collaborative law uh, especially when it comes to custody. It mm -hmm. makes sense to me mm -hmm. that two parents who are trying to come up with a parenting plan mm -hmm. for their child this is not rocket science you do not need uh, a judge, a total stranger, mm -hmm. to tell you where your child's going to live and how often you're each going to mm -hmm. see the child. And two people with some help should be able to come up with a plan mm -hmm. that maximizes the child's time with both parents. For I sure. get that. Yeah. But what about the financial stuff? What if you don't trust mm -hmm. your spouse to be honest about what he or she has? Where's their property? Where's their money? Yep. What's their true income? How are you going to be sure that you're negotiating with somebody and they're going to be up front so that you can mm -hmm. divide the property fairly yep. without maybe having to go to court to get some orders True. to take a look at certain documents they've got that they're not showing you. Mm -hmm. well, one of the tenets of collaborative law is there has to be full financial disclosure and that's part of the collaborative contract. And the lawyers involved in that case are upfront and frank with each other. If a lawyer needs something, they're going to see it. Because the lawyers are still individually responsible to that client and also to the financial disclosure requirements. But the lawyer can't force a client to produce a document that the client has 
uh, has has hidden, or maybe they've created a document that's fraudulent. Correct. And, and if it, but if the lawyer who's their collaborative lawyer is no, recognizes that that client is either not producing documents or that something's not up up front in the honesty of the document, the obligation of the collaborative lawyer is to make that client come forward and make that client correct the problem. If they don't, that lawyer has an obligation to withdraw. And it's usually a pretty good signal to the other lawyer. If lawyer A withdraws, usually a pretty good signal that something's up. And financial disclosure tends to be a common response. Well, I think it's really important for people to know their options. I think they have to understand that family court is not the only way to mm -hmm. go. And collaborative law is, by and large, very successful. So I thank you for sharing that information with us. Thanks. Thanks You're for welcome. being here. Thanks.